Hello, welcome to the North Carolina 4-H Daily Spark. We will be presenting to you Poultry 101. I am Cynthia Robbins, the 4-H agent in Rutherford County, and this is Colton. And, and he is six years old, he is my son, and we are happy to um, show you our coops today. We're gonna introduce you to some of our feathery friends, um, show you some eggs, and so stay tuned and we'll get started because we are excited to have you today. All birds have feathers and all birds have wings, but not all birds can fly. Ostriches are the world's largest birds that cannot fly. They weigh over 250 pounds and they weigh six or eight feet tall. And a bee hummingbird is the world's smallest bird and it weighs lesser than a dime and it's two inches tall. They only live in Cuba. And Colton, tell me how much does an ostrich weigh? 250 pounds. That's a, a big difference between a bee hummingbird that weighs less than a dime and yeah. an ostrich that weighs 250 pounds, isn't it? Yeah. Now we will start introducing you to some of our flock. We're going to start with our bantams today. Bantams are the miniature chicken of the chicken world. There are many kinds of kinds of bantams. Are bantams babies or are they fully grown, Colton? They're fully grown, but they're miniatures. Miniatures be they're adult chickens, but they're they're small and they're they're always going to be like this small. They're never going to grow bigger. Okay. Well, tell me, who is this that you're holding? Charlotte. And what is Charlotte? She's a silver duckling bantam. What breed is she? She's an old English game. And how old is Charlotte? Two and a half. Okay. And does, does Charlotte lay eggs, Colton? Yes, she lays cream colored eggs. And tell me about her eggs. How big are they? Are they um, big or small? Small. They're miniature like her whole body is. All right. Well, it's nice to meet you today, Charlotte. Now we're going to trade Charlotte and get, um, you want to go see if we can grab Wilbur? We'll be right back, folks. All right, so tell me who you have now. Uh, this is Mickey. Mickey? Well, what is Mickey? He's a rooster. All right, so you just had Charlotte. Tell me tell me what uh, bantams you have. Um, I have um, Charlotte and Wilbur and Mickey and Minnie. Okay, well tell us, what is what is Mickey here? Um, he's a rooster. And what's a rooster? Um, a male adult chicken. Okay. And what is a female called? A hen. A, a little a little girl chicken is called a pullet, and a little boy chicken is called a cockerel. All right, and what is a baby chicken called? A chick. Okay, good job. So tell us um, a little bit about roosters. Um, How can you tell the difference between a hen and a rooster, Colton? Because roosters, their bodies are bigger and they have spurts on the back of their legs and the uh, combs and waddles are uh, bigger. And what else? Uh, are their tail feathers any bigger? And their tail feathers are more bigger. And more colorful, aren't they? Yeah. All right. And when a rooster has met with a hen, uh, when a chick, a uh, hen is trying to have a chick, he, uh, he fertilizes the egg for the chick to hatch. Mm -hmm. And tell me something else about roosters. What uh, only roosters do? So. They always say, er, 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 cock -a doo -da doo All right. Great, so thank you Colton and Mickey. If you want to put Mickey back in his cage, we will venture over to the big girls now. In our larger coop, we have several different breeds of hens and they are about a year old. A hen usually starts laying eggs around six months of age. And, um, and like I mentioned, these are about a year old, so they are in full production. 
And um, chickens exist in many colors, sizes, shapes. Um, there are more than 350 combinations of um, physical features. So a class of chickens is a group of breeds that have similar characteristics in same geographical areas. The classes of chickens are American, Asiatic, English, Mediterranean, Continental, and all other standard breeds. So a breed is a group that possesses a um, given set of physical characteristics, including their body shape and size, their skin color, the number of toes that they have, and if they have feathered or non-feathered legs. So um, we love and enjoy our chickens and we hope that you do too. So this is Wilma. We have Wilma and Betty and a few other silver lace wine dots. And wine dots are in the American class, so they originated here in the United States. Um, they are a dual purpose bird, which means they are both um, egg layers and good meat producers. Um, we of course just use ours for eggs. And they lay nice, pretty, um, large brown eggs, like this right here. And, um, and you can see they have a bright red comb. This particular comb is called a rose comb. And they come in other colors of white, buff, blue, golden laced, partridge, black, and more. And you can see that this is what you call a silver laced wine dot. All right, I'll be back in just a moment with another bird. Meet Reese and Peanut. They are buttercups. Buttercups are in the Mediterranean class and they originated in Sicily. They were imported to the United States in 1835, but some poultry historians think that this bird roots all the way back to biblical times. Um, they are a smaller frame bird that lay a, that lay a fair number of eggs. Um, you can tell they have these big white earlobes, and so that t that's a good indicator that they will lay a white egg. You can see that they are most known for their uniquely shaped um, combs that's called the buttercup comb. They are the only breed known to have a buttercup shaped comb. Meet Diana, Kate, Elizabeth still waiting in the coop. Um, they are Sussex chickens and they belong to the English class originating from Sussex, England where they were prized table fowl for more than 100 years. They are a good general purpose meaning that they're good for both meat and egg production and they lay like nice brown eggs. They come in a variety of colors from buff, light, red, um, and speckled. These are considered speckled. And if you can notice, and we'll do some close-up shots, um, that their deep mahogany feathers are tipped in a white spangled that's separated from the mahogany uh, by a band of black. So it's a real pretty detailed color in their feathers. And they have a single comb. You can see that single comb right there. Thank you, girls. Meet Dorothy and Blanche. They are silver lace Polish chickens. And Polish is a very unusual and rare breed. Um, very beautiful, they're known for their crest. Um, Polish are in the continental class. And most people think that they originated in the country Poland, but that's actually not true. The name Polish was possibly derived from um, their odd shaped skulls that resembled polled cattle. Polish do not have combs like the other chickens I showed you. Instead, they have these feathered crests, and they should be nice and round. Um, because their crests are so big and fluffy, they inhibit their vision. They only have vision straight in front of them, and so they're, they're very susceptible to predators, and they're easily spooked. So when we're trying to approach one of our Polish, we have to speak to them and let them know that we're there, and it sort of helps them from being so scared of us. Um, they are a lightweight, very lightweight, small frame bird. They lay nice white, usually long and skinny eggs. And like I said, they're pretty defenseless against predators, so they're considered a high maintenance bird because you really have to keep check on their faces to make sure that, um, that they can see and they don't have mites or anything in, or any external parasites in their, in their crest. Welcome back, Charlotte. Now Colton is going to go over the parts of a chicken with us. Comb, beak, waddle, eye, okay. breast, yeah. right here, and saddle. All right, and show me the earlobe there, Colton. Right here behind the eye. And you can usually tell what color eggs a hen will lay 
by looking at the color of her earlobe. If she has a light colored earlobe, it's a good indicator that she will lay white eggs. And if she has a darker earlobe, then that usually, not in all cases, but most of the time indicates that she will lay um, darker colored eggs. All right, so what else can you show us? You showed us the breast. And the breast, and the saddle, and the, um, and the shanks, and the vent, and if you notice, the vent is where they lay eggs, mm -hmm. and the shanks is on the back of the legs. Yeah, the shanks are down here, where they don't have any feathers. And why do they toe have and feet? Can you tell us why chickens have feathers? What do feathers do for us? Because um, if it's snowing or what. 20 degrees outside it helps their body get warm like almost like penguins okay yes in fact feathers do they help keep and the birds. penguins are birds uh-huh so their bodies are covered with feathers and he feathers help the birds to fly to stay warm and to stay dry don't they and we feed our chickens a laying mash. It's a good mixture. And of, scratch. Yes, we feed them scratch. And mealworms and their treats. Yes, they love to get special tasty treats. Um, dried mealworms, and they also love fresh green grass. Yeah, they um, are pullets, which is grown-ups now, and they're heavy to carry. And um, every day we let them go out. After my daddy's home from work and feeds the chickens and gets them water, they, we let me and mommy let them come out and eat those clover because they'll eat that clover in a heartbeat. Yes, they will. And they, they love that clover. Do chickens, do they chew their food before they swallow it? No, um, they just swallow it whole because they don't have no teeth. They just only have tongues. Yes, and that pushes it down their esophagus, and then it goes into their crop, doesn't it? Yeah. It stays in their crop, and then it, it finally gets to the gr the gizzard, and that's where it's grinded up um, into food that can be digested. You should gather your eggs daily from your coop and remove any debris or foreign matter, mainly feces, that might be on your eggs. Washing is generally not recommended unless the eggs are dirty. Washing your eggs will remove the bloom or the cuticle layer that is a protective coating that the hen places on the egg to prevent bacteria from entering into the egg. Only wash if you must, and soap or chemicals should never be used because they will penetrate your eggshell and your egg will end up tasting like those soaps or chemicals. Eggshells are made out of calcium carbonate. The hen uses calcium from her diet and calcium from her bones to help make the eggshells um, that go on the eggs. When they're laid on the eggs, they're actually very soft and pliable, and then they harden into a hard shell. And you notice some eggs are brown and some eggs are white, and that's just the breed of chicken that laid the egg. Um, different breeds lay different colored eggs. I mentioned earlier, you can usually tell by their earlobes if they're gonna be a, a light egg or a dark egg layer. And brown eggs or white eggs, they're all the same in the inside, it's just a different breed of chicken actually produce those eggs. Once your eggs are clean, they should be placed into an egg carton. You always place your eggs small end down because the air cell is at the top and there are more pores in the large end of the egg. So they should go small end down, large end up, and they should be placed in a carton in the inside of the refrigerator, not the door of the refrigerator. An egg will age more in one day at room temperature than it will in one week in the refrigerator. Eggs are a great source of protein, vitamins, and minerals. One large egg contains over six grams of protein and only 72 calories. With the exception of vitamin C, an egg contains every vitamin and many minerals that we need in our diets. Thank you for joining in. We hope you've enjoyed our session today on chickens and eggs and enjoyed meeting our feathered friends. We hope you have a great Monday. Cock-a-doodle-doo! Goodbye, everyone.